Well, I'd like to welcome Dr. Guy Harvey to the workbench. And you know, Guy, I know that it's Marlin week here at the Chevy Florida Insider Fisher Report. And certainly a Marlin is really much your passion. So tell me a little bit about what's going on in the Ocean Foundation and the tagging programs. Yeah, thanks for having me, Rick. We'd, uh, we just finished an expedition to Mexico. We're tagging white Marlin with pop-up archival tags. And um, we tagged about nine Marlin in four days, so quite successful. And uh, we got some reports already from, from some of the tracks. And uh, we tagged some last year as well. So we are adding to our, our experiments. So let's take a look at the yeah. video here, Guy. Great. Let's have a look. So this was down off of the Yucatan? Yes, it was. We do a lot of different kinds of research work there, but this study was just about white marlin. Of course, we've got to catch them first. We're fishing with Captain Anthony Mandillo on the Keen M. We bring the fish in the boat. Uh, we put the tag into the fish, into the shoulder. We do this because we want to really control where the tag is, release the fish. I'm there filming the release. Right. And we want to make sure that they go off. And of course, the tracks that result from this give us a little bit more insight into their migrations and their natural history. This fish swims from the Yucatan through the Straits of Florida out into the Northwestern Atlantic. The tag came off, unfortunately, but we suspect it would have completed that loop and come back into the Caribbean. So Guy, let me ask you something. I noticed there in the video that we had an actual, you covered the fish's face. What is that about? That's about keeping it cool in the boat. We also irrigate it by putting our decos into its mouth and put it on a mat so we don't disturb the skin. Treatment of the animal is very important. And uh, you can do it in the water, but you give up an element of control. All right, so one other question. You know, I, you do a lot and you <laughs> give back a lot. Tell us how, you know, you're funding all of these projects through some of the other things you do. Tell me a little bit about that. The tagging projects are funded through the licensing programs that we do, the apparel, for example. We also get other sponsors that came on board. Uh, Packy Offield, the late Packy Offield, uh, helped us with this white marlin tagging program. And we've got lots of other corporate sponsors now helping because it's the right thing to do for their companies. They want to give back. They want to learn, help us learn more about the fish. And so it's more of a collaborative effort these days than it ever has been. Also because we've got great results and we're learning more about these fish that are so overfished, overexploited, endangered in some cases. So if somebody's watching and they want to help with the Guy Harvey Ocean Foundation, how can they go about doing that, Guy? They can help firstly by being a responsible fisherman. That's always the key thing I say. But secondly, they can donate to our tagging programs or become a hammerhead or join some kind of conservation organization. Not necessarily mine, but obviously that's great because we're at the forefront of this kind of uh, research work, but to, uh, to sponsor some of the tags, you get the naming rights for your fish, whether it's a shark, a tuna, or a marlin, and uh, you can track the animals over a long uh, period of time. And often we have schools now that will track some of the sharks on a daily basis, and we get school kids joining in the tagging exercise, and it's very educational. Well, thank you so much for being here. We appreciate everything you're doing, and on the behalf of all the recreational fishermen throughout Florida and the world, I want to thank you, but you know what? Do you think that maybe we could have some fish tag Brie? <laughs> that would be what great. do you think, Brie? You think we well, should have a Brie fish? 